out here to the east, we have um, Silver Lake out, to, out there, which the hills. On the other side of that would be the LA River, which is a different watershed. To the north of us is also LA River in the San Fernando Valley. So the, uh, the LA River drains the whole San Fernando Valley, much of the San Gabriel Mountains, um, and, but does still come into the same aquifer as, as we're in here. And it heads on south, these, uh, these hills of the Silver Lake um, and everything pretty much west of here to the north end. And then south too to the Baldwin Hills, which are just out of sight uh, down there in the, the mist. And all along the southern side of the Santa Monica Mountains until you get out to about Santa Monica is all Biona wetland. So um, as you look across all these um, uh, buildings and streets, this all would have been um, pretty much oak woodlands, mixed oak lands with little streams all through and um, Senecas and sloughs, um, lots of marshy areas and um, a very different scene than we get today. Uh, the, this uh, bush we see everywhere is Laurel Schumach here. It's very common. Naturally occurring springs would come down here. That's right. And then over here. Yes. Wow. But then also out there, right? I mean, yes. So there were there were um, springs all through the the basin. Um, the Gabrielino Tongva Indians um, had a. Um, uh, a commandment from, from their gods to uh, bathe every morning before sunrise. So they, um, by religious duty, had to live near running water. Uh, and there was plenty of it. Uh, but so their little villages all would have been set stream side. One stream or to a spring um, would have been their, their habitation. And then what about the uh, font on Hyperion? You know, Hyperion Avenue, the, which, uh, it was a uh, freshwater geyser. I don't know about that. That, that was capped, that, that's now Rowena Reservoir. Oh, okay. If, if it's a little clearer, you'd be able to see that. Yeah, uh, Rowena Reservoir, um, right over here, is owned uh, by the LEDWP, created by the LEDWP. And there's actually a movement right now, uh, there's an LA Times editorial about it, to uh, right now it's fenced in and to open it up and turn it into a, a walking park, make it a little more accessible because LA is so park poor. If you took, if we didn't have Griffith Park with its thousands and thousands of acres, we would be in a huge deficit for parks in LA. Um, there's, there's, as Jeanette was saying, there's, there's so many areas all through this, this basin that have just no parks at all, it's, and it's tragic. The special group has a park it committee now, which mm -hmm. is working on trying to establish parks in, within the central Good. group, which Great. is is all of the Bayona Creek areas we're talking about. Here. Right. So we need to work together. Yeah. Uh, right. To make them make the, make them in a way that helps with the water and the, the and recreation yeah, and wildlife. It's, yeah. it's worth right. pointing out that our, our city wouldn't wouldn't even be here if it wasn't for this water being here before us. So mm -hmm. it's kind of rude to disrespect it the way we have been. That's right. LA was is here. LA the city is here because of LA River water. And uh, the entire city uh, lived off of the water from the L.A. River, Bayona River, and the other natural rivers um, until Mulholland brought down and tapped into the, uh, the Sierra Nevada River, Owens Valley, with the whole aqueduct system. Has anyone seen the L.A. River in the lab this week? It is flowing. Oh, it's side to side, and it looks like the current is two, three feet. It's an amazing runoff, and it's just shooting down that concrete channel. And on either side, everything is dry and, and, and crispy. Yeah. Not and I water. Imagine what the bay looks like. It's probably full of crap. <laughs> so one of the big advantages of, of um, uh, urban ac acupuncture is so that the, the runoff goes straight into the aquifer without getting onto the streets where it picks up all the pollution, and then, then it's too, too polluted to really want to deal with again. But if we can get it just to go right into the ground, then it'll be cleaner, and everybody, all the, all the wildlife, and everybody will be better off. And historically and naturally, that's the way it would have gone. You know, yeah. it would that's have right. gone into the ground. That's right. In now, in, in Irvine, they have a place that they call the San Joaquin Marsh, and it's it used to be a soybean field. It's now a uh, Audubon bird preserve, but it also cleans the water that comes down. Uh, in the river 
and it goes in, they get rid of the solids, then they get rid of all the other stuff, and it's all done fairly naturally. It has a very small pump after it goes through, they get rid of the solids, it has a little pump, pumps it up not many feet, and then it just goes through a series, I think, is it seven little ponds, and gets cleaned, and then it goes back in, into the river. Yeah. And you can see the river coming down, you can see the, the break, and the inlet, and then the outlet, no birds here, lots of birds here. It's really funny. But they have something else. They have these little pocket parks that any runoff water goes through the pocket parks. And the pocket park is probably an acre. And it has like a little pond in it. You can see the water come in. You can see the water go out. So even before it gets to the river, it has had some cleaning because they have cleaning plants and, and um, inside you know these these little pocket park uh, uh, streams and uh, I guess you, uh, ponds whatever you want to call them and it's it's very interesting the way they do that and I was thinking that would be so perfect through Koreatown Incidentally, speaking of Koreatown one thing that one of the great um, urban renewals of a river happened in Seoul where they had a channelized river going right through the middle of town and have um, converted Used it, it back as a into a freeway. Yeah, converted back into a beautiful setting. Yeah, I put that on our website, mm -hmm. savebiona.org. Did oh, you good. see it there? Or no, I haven't. Done. It's there. Good. And good. actually, in Irvine, at one of these sort of pocket park areas she was talking about, adjacent to the the water the channel, they have a community garden, and I saw that, you know, and. People are gardening in there, so that's a really nice uh -huh. landscape. Pretty little gardens, but less likely to gentrify areas, particularly in the southern parts of the basin, where we don't want to be pushing out people who are, you know, living there, um, as as can happen. And so that uh, uh, an urban garden can help um, make the, the the nature accessible to people and and provide a lot of the same benefits of urban acupuncture and so on, without um, pushing people out. Plus they can grow their own food and yes. it can be organic yes. uh -huh. and fresh.